Hey guys, welcome to my new video and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to pretty much enhance your images within Adobe Lightroom. And if you're not sure what Lightroom is, it's a program made by Adobe that is used to organize and edit raw files. And in this video I'm going to be showing you how to pretty much bring out the colors, the details and everything like that within your photos. Uh, so jumping into Lightroom here, um, I'm going to be showing you how to turn something like this into something like this. And you can see it just looks a whole lot better. And this tutorial should be a little bit long since I'm going to go over all the effects and what they do. And yeah, I hope you find it helpful though. Uh, before I start, you can see over on the left here that I've got two preset packs already for color enhancing and softness presets. And I will go over that at the end of the video. Okay, so to start things off, we're going to reset our image. And we're going to go to the develop tab up here and start at the very top. Okay, so the first thing we see is white balance. Now, you can either set this to as shot, adjust it manually, or, you know, select a preset. Now, the way I usually do it is select auto and then adjust it from there to my taste, since auto usually does a pretty good job of figuring out where it's meant to be, and then you can stylize it a bit from there. Uh, you can also select black and white, or you can use the white balance selector, which I don't usually use all of that much. Uh, so that seems pretty good for now. Now if you go down to exposure, you can either click the auto button to help sort it all out, but it's obviously not as good as doing it yourself, since the program doesn't have the same taste in pictures as you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the exposure here, and the way I'm adjusting these sliders is I'm just holding my mouse over that slider and using the up and down arrow keys. Uh, and that way it just jumps up in small amounts instead of using your mouse. Okay, so now that we've done that, you can see it helped bring out this lens flare up in the tree here and the sun coming through the trees. Okay, so we're going to skip recovery and fill light since we don't need any of that in this specific photo. And we might want to bring up the black value just a tiny bit. Okay, so now moving down to brightness. Brightness works similar to exposure. However, I think I read somewhere that exposure focuses more on the highlighted parts, but don't quote me on that. You're probably better off finding out for yourself since I'm not completely sure myself and I just do it from taste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the contrast a little bit and then bring up the brightness to compensate for that. And actually we might go back up to fill that and just bring it up to 5 to help bring out some detail in the branch here. So now if we just reset that, you can see the difference already is quite significant and we still got a lot of options to go over. Okay, so I'm going to bring up contrast a little bit more and maybe bring the brightness down, sorry, but that's looking pretty good now. And the next one down is clarity. Now what clarity does is it pretty much helps to find the edges of your photo. Now just be careful you don't go overboard. You can see if we bring this up, the background here gets quite a bad black haloing effect and some of the out of focus parts here just don't look as nice. So you're either better off using it to very slight amounts, so plus 30 or so, just to help bring out the branch, or you can use the adjustment brush tool and just go over the branch itself and miss all of the out of focus parts. And that's one way that I tend to do things quite a bit. Okay, so now down to vibrance and saturation. I'm going to just bring up the vibrance a little bit to help bring out those colors and leave the saturation at zero. Uh, now what tone curves is, pretty much you can adjust the highlights, lights, darks, and shadows all individually along this tone curve line. Or you can just select a preset. I usually leave it at the default medium, or in some cases, depending on the photo, I might adjust some slightly, but for now, that's looking pretty good. Now, what hue, saturation, and luminance do is pretty much self-explanatory. However, a cool feature in Lightroom is these adjustment sliders here. And now, I'll demonstrate this on a different photo for you. So, if we go to here, and we just reset this, we can see if we go down to here, and we go to the luminance tab, and select this slider, what it does is... Let's you select any color, slide up or down, and Lightroom will automatically adjust the sliders that correspond to those colors. So you'll see if we click on the blue sky here and drag it down, it pretty much just adjusts the blue, but slightly green, and same at saturation. And that's just a cool way to really help enhance the skies or anything in your photos without individually playing around with the sliders. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd demonstrate it on an image where you'd actually be able to see it. So back to this one. And moving down to split turning. And again, I'll have to swap images for this one, sorry, but um, you can see I used split toning in this image to create that nice soft uh, pink effect. And if we reset that, you can see it's got no pink, and this one is a bit softer, has that nice glowing about it. And that's what you can do with split toning, create some nice tones within your images, and it also works really well on black and white photos, um, such as this one with a bit of uh, brown split tone, but... That's a horrible image in my opinion, so uh, just a demonstration. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that, and moving down to detail. Okay, so this box here is pretty much a magnified view of your photo, 
and it allows you to monitor your sharpness and noise levels I guess and you can see there's a little bit of noise here you might not be able to see it on the screen recorder but since there's already noise without me playing around the sharpness I'm just going to probably add a little bit of luminance in to help hide that and that's looking pretty good there okay now down to lens corrections you can either set this to profile and it'll automatically detect your lens or you can select it so I've got mine right, which it says I used a Canon 16-35 to lens, and it'll automatically try and correct the distortion and the vignetting from that lens. Or you can do it all manually, and I prefer this way since I usually like to add in a nice vignette from the lens corrections. And yes, there is another vignette option down here, but I prefer that one. I think it gives uh, more of a subtle and soft effect, but that's just my personal opinion, and it might not be yours as well. Okay, so there we go. If we reset this, we can see the difference is quite dramatic. And I hope this helped. I know I was just playing around with the sliders, but there's not much more I can show you since every photo is different. So going back to these presets over here, if you go to my DeviantArt, which I will link in the description, um, you'll see I've got two preset packs here. Here's one, which you can download to create the soft pink effects. And the other one is in my gallery. So feel free to go to there, check out my photography, and um, yeah download the presets if you like. So thanks for watching, if you have any more suggestions leave them below and I will see you in the next video.